All right, the first thing we're gonna do in making this flipper is uh, cut our stack to length. But before we measure out our, our length and cut it, we're going to clean up and square off this edge right here. You can see it's pretty rough. Um, so to do that, we're gonna take the nice, clean, straight edge, push it up against the fence, and we're just going to cut off uh, a sliver with the compound sliding miter saw. So I'm gonna line it up, cut maybe an eighth inch off or so. Um, fingers in a good, safe position. Far away from the blade, we're pushing down and back against the fence. Here we go. Perfect. Now the length of our flipper is seven inches, so we're gonna put a little tick mark right at seven inches. Use a combination square to send that line across our stock. And we want to cut on this side of the line because from here to here is seven inches. And if we cut on that side of the line, that's going to cut off part of our flipper. First thing we need to do is strike a center line down the middle of our piece. It should be roughly two inches in thickness. This guy is... Yeah, just, just about right at it. So, I'm going to come over here, put a mark at one inch. Do the same thing over here. We're going to connect the dots. Um, so, the top of the flipper has a radius or a curve. Um, if you look at your multi-view sketch, it says it has a radius of one half, which means it has a diameter of one. We're going to sketch that curve with a compass. I need to set my compass to a half inch. So the spike without a pencil, I'm just going to line up with a whole inch mark. And I'm going to close the compass until my pencil lead, not this spike, but the pencil lead, points to the half inch mark. Now I'm going to line up the pencil lead with the edge of my board. And I'm going to put this spike right here on my line. Now I'm going to apply pressure down on this spike. Not a whole lot of pressure on the pencil lead because it'll break on me. And I really only need about a half circle here. There. That'll work. We're going to draw a line going from this corner to the, in this case, the side of the circle that is farthest away from me or closest to you. All right. Pretty easy, right? Same deal over here. I just want to be able to see the edge of the circle, send my line that way. Good, this is easy, right? Last thing we need to do layout wise is mark where our hole is going to be. Uh, according to the multi-view sketch, it is one and a half inches in from the this part of our flipper. So now before we take this guy over to the drill press, we're going to poke the center of our hole with the awl. That just gives the drill bit uh, a place to, to sit. That way it doesn't wander around our board. All right, we're going to chuck up a one inch Forster bit. We're going to cut the sides off of our stock with a bandsaw. The safest way to do it is to use this guy right here. You can spread these apart, slide your flipper in, and it holds it pretty securely. Uh, make sure that your flipper is down against the table. It's not like propped up like this because if it is, when you push it into the bandsaw, it's going to go pop and scare you. So push this down against the table. Um, plan how you're going to cut this. I'm not going to cut the radius out right here on the bandsaw. I can do that with a file much easier. Now you guys have got to turn the machine off when you back the blade out because like I said earlier this is kind of spring loaded so it is pinching our cut close. So if you try to pull the blade out while it's moving, um, look, at, look at how much it's, it's moving the blade. Um, if the blade was moving, it's possible it'd hop out the tracks and scare you. I don't want that to happen, so turn the machine off. Uh, I'm going to take it out of the holder. Um, it's going to be a little easier. Hold on to this, because we're actually going to need it um, when we put this back in the holder. I'm just going to throw it back in there the way that it came out, like that. Same deal on the other side. We're going to work this top radius first. So remember, you are always going to file up end grain. End grain is this part of the uh, board. This is face grain. This is end grain. Always 
file and cut up end grain. Because if you go against it, you're just asking for, for splintering and tear out, and it's not gonna look nice. So, file up, end grain. Now we can clean up this edge right here as well as this one really quickly, really easily with a, a block plane. However, you have to plane downhill because if you plane uphill, imagine these are the, my fingers are the grain of the wood, it's running that direction right now. If you plane uphill, you're gonna run into Splinter City. If you plane downhill, you should be able to just shave them off. Occasionally, you'll have a weird piece of wood where planing downhill results in tear out. Uh, if the grain is running that direction, it'll cause tear out. Uh, if that happens, hey, just plane the other direction. That's a good rule of thumb. If the block plane is not giving you <clears throat> the finish that you want, try switching directions. My first couple strokes with this block plane is going to be just knocking this edge off right here. Once that's knocked off, I should be able to just <clears throat> smooth this guy out in like three, four passes. All right, I'm actually getting some tear out up here. Um, I'm not getting any tear out right here, so if I switch directions, this would probably look nice, but all this would look bad. I'm going to call this good enough, right? I'll, <clears throat> I'll work that out with sandpaper. That's not the end of the world. Um, but for the most part, this edge is nice and clean. Do the same thing to the other side. Now, the last thing we're going to do before we get to sanding is chamfer this guy right here. And by that, I mean basically cut that off right there. All right, so that's all the material I want to get rid of. Your uh, multi-view sketch says this angle right here should be a 45 angle, 45 degree angle. I'm not going to have you guys get out a protractor framing square. We're just going to kind of eyeball it. Right? Remember which direction do we file when it comes to face grain. We always file up face grain. Last thing we're going to do before we start sanding is uh, erase this pencil line. That way we're not sanding graphite into the wood. I'm going to sand the most difficult part of this guy first. We're going to sand the edges of the hole. Inside of the hole should be pretty clean, right? Fortuner bits usually leave a good, uh, good finish. A dowel rod or just any round object. Wrap your sandpaper around it. Go light here. We're not, we're not trying to saw this thing in half and just kind of run it around the circle. You don't need me to uh, explain to you how you sand. You just know sand with the grain, start low, end high. The difference between this project and most other woodworking projects is that we have to bring out the grain in between each grit. Um, we got to do that because we're making utensils and utensils are going to get wet, they're going to get washed, they're going to be exposed to water all the time. Um, we've essentially got to get it used to that. So sand, and we're just going to soak this guy. We're going to run it under water. It's all soaked. We're going to take a paper towel, just wipe off the excess. We're going to let it dry. All right, we made it up to 220 grit. Um, you're going to notice as you're sanding, uh, this corner, this corner, and this edge is going to get sharp. Just work that sharp edge down with a uh, with sandpaper. Um, you don't want a really sharp edge on a kitchen utensil, a wooden one at least, because that edge is actually going to curl over uh, and it's going to look not very good. Um, and if it's curled over and you just leave it, it can uh, hold on to food scraps. Bacteria can grow in there, and we don't want that. We're going to run this underwater one last time, um, sand it once it dries, and then we'll apply finish. We're done sanding this guy. Uh, we're going to take some safe wax, the hard stuff. It's got lots of different waxes in it, plus mineral oil, and it's going to stay on our utensil for quite a while. Uh, if you were just going to take a paper towel, swipe it across the wax, you're really not going to be picking up much. You're not going to try to scoop this. Um, you're just going to get some wax on the towel, and then you're going to rub it onto your utensil. You're making sure this stuff gets everywhere. All right, now this stuff doesn't exactly dry, um, but it will <clears throat> soak into the wood. I'd let it sit for about an hour or so, um, or you can hit it with a heat gun, and that's going to help the the waxes essentially melt and seep into the wood. Um, and when you're done with that, you're just going to take a, a new paper towel, wipe off any excess, and you're good to go.